Welcome, brave souls, to the chilling depths of horror and detail, the realm where the shadows whisper ancient secrets and nightmares come to life. I am your guide through the darkness, and on this channel, we delve into the spine-chilling world of Wendigo horror stories that will send shivers down your spine. First Story The Deer in the Woods This is the first time I'm telling anyone that wasn't there about this. I guess I can tell the story better than anyone else that was there. I was 16 out in rural Oregon hanging out with my friend PJ and his friends and cousins from the area for his birthday. He lived out in the mountains by St. Helens and saw some deer, coyotes and a pack of wolves once, but that was about it besides the occasional black bear. His parents weren't home but they wouldn't care if we were smoking or drinking anyways. So most of us were at least buzzed or kinda stoned, but none of us were blasted. We all collectively agreed on what I now know to be the worst idea ever. We all decided to go exploring in the dark out in the forest. There were about eight of us, but we were meeting some kid who lived nearby. We met up and got roaming around in the woods. This kid was a little weird but he was pretty poor and he was funny so we let him tag along cause he had nothing else to do. He was pretty normal except I just got this bad feeling around him. Like something was off. Like I was being watched. No one knew exactly where he lived or his parents but you could find him in a general area near the only store, just outside the woods. We had been out in the woods for about 30 minutes, but we were pretty deep. That's when PJ's cousin James pointed at something darting by the trees. James was a little younger and had a strong imagination, but I agreed with him. Something was moving in the corner of my eye. We didn't see anything else over there and kept moving. We found a beat up old dirt path and decided to follow it. Couldn't have been dumber. We found an old abandoned house and decided to explore it. We were rummaging around when we heard the most blood-curdling, terrifying scream any of us have ever heard. And then we heard James scream. None of us were doing anything so I pulled my knife out and went to check on him. He was about ten feet out, sat on the ground on the edge of the treeline. He was bleeding with a bad cut on his leg and I pulled him inside. He just told me something got me and started crying. We bandaged him up and did a head count. Everyone was inside. No cell service obviously, we were easily five miles in. We rummaged around for stuff to barricade the door and to defend ourselves. I found an old Colt single action in one of the drawers. Thing had more dust than anything you can name. It had all six shots and there was some spare ammo. I had the most experience with guns and I was the oldest so I kept it. We probably hid in there for 20 minutes before anything. We heard someone screaming for help. Every single bone and cell in my body told me to stay inside but guess what a stubborn dumb teen does. Not that. That weird kid beat me outside and started yelling someone's name. There was no one out there. Then I saw it in the tree lean. Now I am a pretty big guy. I was 180-ish pounds and 6 feet 1 inch at the time for football, but this thing towered over me. It was easily 7 foot. And those eyes. Jesus Christ those eyes. I will never forget them. I'm writing this story because I hope it will help me do that. They just peer into your soul and stay there. Then it was gone in less than a second. Of the few people that actually saw it we can only agree on a few things. The eyes, the size, and the head. It looked like a deer skull. Call it what you will, skinwalker, wendigo, urban legend, I don't give a fuck. It was real and it took that kid. In the ten seconds I was paralyzed in fear. It took him into the woods, and the screams lasted about 20 seconds. 
I shot three times, but only one round went off, the ammo was probably older than anyone alive today. I refilled it all with that spare ammo in the unopened box and hoped that gave me a better chance. Then I heard the footsteps. I had backed up from the tree lean and now heard my friend screaming at me. Just as it was about to break through I emptied the gun into it. It was hurt and ran away, but it was still alive. I picked up James on my back and we ran towards the closest road, opposite the way we came. I sprinted for at least ten minutes straight. There was no fucking way I was gonna let that thing catch up to me. We got to the store, locked up the doors and told the clerk to call 911. James ended up being fine but he still walks with a bit of a limp. Cops gave us warm blankets and let me keep the gun. Pretty dumb if you ask me, but they were old country cops and probably used to it. We never saw that kid again. Cops told us they didn't know about anyone of his description. It's been a few years. Getting closer to a decade. I carry that gun with me everywhere I go now. PJ carries too. We don't talk about it. We had one conversation about it, and it was about that kid. How every single damned person in the area denied his existence. I remember one key thing about him. His eyes. They gave me that exact same feeling that the things did. Me and PJ agreed to that. That's why I'm going with him to meet his new neighbor, who gave him one weird look. Second story. It watched from the shadows. All my life I've enjoyed walking around outside late at night. As a teen, I'd sneak out at one or two in the morning and just walk around in the empty quiet, then rush home before dawn so my mom wouldn't wake up and find me gone. Most nights, nothing more than a nice walk would happen. Sometimes I'd see people coming or going in a hurry, off to who knows where. Once I caught a neighbor cheating on her husband and forgot to shut the blinds. Nothing that out of the ordinary. As I grew older, my nighttime adventures would last longer and longer with the freedom of being an adult and not having to be home by a certain time. This continued for years until the night of this story. I was living in Washington State and I couldn't sleep. I tried to watch TV but there was nothing on. I tried to wake up my girlfriend to talk or have fun, but once she's asleep, she's dead to the world. I hadn't gone walking in a long time and this seemed like the best time for it. So, I got dressed, grabbed my phone and keys and headed out into the misty cool evening. Now where I was living, after midnight the town is pretty much dead. You have a random street light every couple of blocks. The stoplights switch to blinking yellow at 2 a.m. and everything becomes eerily quiet. I was walking toward the river that ran through my town when I saw a couple of wolves a few blocks ahead of me. Wolves was no big thing, I'd seen them along with deer, elk and even a huge moose from my bedroom window just wandering around in the middle of the night. That night, however, there was something off about them, they looked scared. What scares a wolf? I know I didn't want to find out, so I turned the corner and started heading in another direction, deciding to work my way around them and continue on toward the river. I made it past them and didn't see anything unusual on my way and was soon at a park that lines the riverbank. Deciding to stop and rest a bit, I sat down at a picnic table and watched the moonlight reflecting off the water. It was very peaceful and quiet, the water unnaturally still as the wind and flow of the river make things move rather quickly. That on its own didn't bother me much, it was what I noticed then that bothered me. A cold chill came over me, not that unusual for Washington, but with it came this damp musty smell, like wet moss mixed with rotting wood and mushrooms. Wincing at the smell, I looked around to see if something had died and was rotting nearby, something you'd find with all the wild animals wandering about, but couldn't spot anything. 
Deciding I needed some fresher air, I got up and decided to follow the boardwalk that ran along the length of the river. As I stepped onto the wooden platform, I noticed there was no noise. Now this boardwalk would make a loud tapping sound or even creak in places when you stepped on it, but that night, it was dead silent. I looked down at my feet and hopped up and down a few times, but no sound. Feeling a little weirded out, I quickened my pace, deciding to hurry along the boardwalk to the bridge at the other end that crossed the river and entered the downtown area where there was a 24-hour grocery. It was well lit, had someone working all the time and would feel much safer than where I was just then. So I hurried along the boardwalk, not hearing any of my footsteps or anything from the river next to me, until I was close to the bridge. I could see it about three blocks away when I heard a splash. The sound made me jump, I'll admit, after being in almost dead silence for about 15 minutes. I stopped and looked all around, but didn't see anything in the water. This part of the boardwalk bordered a section of forest that the developers of my town decided to leave untouched. You had river, boardwalk, the road, and then trees so thick you couldn't normally see through them. I saw normally because as I turned to look to my right, I saw something moving in the trees. Whatever it was, it was dark, big, hunched over and it smelled, the same smell I had noticed earlier, only this time, much stronger. I stopped, a stupid thing to do, I know, but I was curious. I turned to face the forest and watched this thing looking at me from the shadows. It stood there, hunched over but if it were to stand upright, I would have guessed it was easily over seven feet tall. I couldn't make out any features, just a general shape that stood there, watching me. I shook my head, thinking I might be imagining things, and looked away for a moment, then looked back and the dark shape was closer. It was moving toward me. Now I know my fair share of legends and what might be in the woods in Washington Bigfoot, Wendigo, you name it and I knew that even if it was nothing more than a wild animal, any animal that comes that close to civilization without being scared off is dangerous. Not wanting to be caught by it, I rushed forward toward the bridge once more. It was a narrow bridge with a raised pedestrian platform only big enough for one person at a time to walk across. I knew that if I could reach that, it would slow it down, if it continued to follow me. I ran toward the bridge and I don't know if it was the fear in the moment but I heard something chasing me. I didn't want to look back. I knew the forest ran the length of the road, only stopping once you reached the bridge itself. I needed to reach that bridge. So I sprinted the three blocks to the bridge, the charging sound behind me getting louder and louder until my feet hit the concrete platform and I could hear my footsteps again. I could hear everything again as a multitude of sounds invaded my ears. It was as if I had been inside a silent bubble with only a few sounds audible, only to plunge headfirst into a symphony of sound. Feeling safer on the bridge I spun around to look behind me. I looked into the forest and what I saw I will never forget. The moonlight was brighter here and for a moment I saw something tall, thin almost skeletal, and very dark glaring at me from the shadows of the trees. I watched an inhuman face snarl at me and let out this odd whistling howl before it turned and slunk back into the forest. I continued on to the grocery and waited inside until morning, then caught the 5.30 bus back to my part of town. When I got home, my girlfriend was still asleep so I stripped off my sweaty, smelly clothes and took a shower. As I was showering, she woke up and stepped into the bathroom with me, asking me what had happened to my jacket. Pulling my head out of the shower I asked her what she meant and then looked at my jacket in her hands. Running down the center of the back were five tears in the fabric, deep enough to rip through the outside and the fleece lining but not the inner layer, claw-like markings that were much bigger than a human hand. I told her what had happened, 
having decided to not keep it to myself, not after seeing that, and she looked very worried. She said there were legends of skinwalkers that used to be in the woods before the town was built, but no one had heard anything about them in years. This upset her enough that we moved a month later. Third story. Wendigo. It all began almost a year ago when I went through my girlfriend's computer after she began acting odd. Initially I thought she was cheating on me, but what I found, fuck. It was worse. It's been months since we finally put that hell behind us, but I still feel uneasy at night. Almost one year ago, my girlfriend was kidnapped, and the police had no luck with the case. I moved in with my two friends, Reagan and Jim. My girlfriend began sending me weird texts and we all got scared. One night, Reagan and Jim went to the movies and didn't come back. A week after their disappearance, Reagan showed up at the house, bloodied and naked. She told me about how she and Jim were drugged. She told me how she was kept in a basement, and how she was raped. She told me she saw another girl in that basement. I knew it. I knew it was Victoria. Two days after Reagan got home we set off to find this house of horror. After she told me everything that happened to her, she told me she knew where she was being kept. I have one distinct memory while being transported. A stop sign. It had a cross street on it. I read it. Whitney Ranch and Patrick Lane. She paused for a moment before continuing, the basement wall was all brick. All the houses around here are made of stucco. I bet it sticks out like a sore thumb. I was skeptical. A kidnapper wants to blend in. Whatever the fuck this thing, or this guy, is, he's not holed up in some brick mansion. Why the fuck not? She asked. How many weird ass houses do you see every day you drive? Do you barge in there demanding to know if there are any prisoners in the basement? Shit. Let's go there and fuck this guy up. Right, you're probably thinking that we should just call the police. The thing is, the last time I called the police, I found a severed finger in my house. The next time I called the police, Reagan and Jim were kidnapped. When I called the police again, Reagan was delivered to my doorstep in an absolutely disgusting condition, on the verge of death. Well, before we had our talk, we found something else in the house. A whole hand. And a note. More police begets more limbs. So we went to Patrick and Whitney. We saw no mysterious brick house. We searched the surrounding neighborhood every day that week. Finally, we found it. A house made of brick, just like Reagan said. It was small one story tall. It was unkempt, but that's not saying much in this neighborhood. Aside from the building material, the house looked like any other house on the block. Reagan looked nervous and I sure as hell didn't want to be here, so I told her, you know we can still go back, right? He has Jim, Alex. Fuck. That may have been Jim's hand. That girl with me in there, that could have been Victoria. She was right. Do we knock? I asked. Fuck no. We wait. Our car was parked on the other side of the road adjacent to the house. We waited and waited. Reagan assured me that the kidnapper, a man who called himself Wendigo, left the home at least once a day. We watched the place in shifts during nightfall. Finally around 4 a.m., the front door opened. I shook Reagan awake. Someone walked out of the house. A tall man, the guy had to be at the very least seven feet tall. He was skinny, and he was wearing a tuxedo. It was ripped and ragged. Holy shit, I said, he's just like you described. 
He's even wearing that weird fucking sack on his head. He locked his door and looked around. We ducked under the windows. Slowly I crept up. He was gone. He'd leave for hours at a time, so now is our chance, Reagan said. I was about to unlock the door when something hit the car with a loud thud. Shit! I screamed. My windshield was cracked, and it took a second to process what had hit it. It was a fucking human head, horribly disfigured, pieces of it missing. I turned on the car and was ready to gun it when I heard glass break and Reagan scream. She was being pulled out of the passenger window. Just drive, drive damn it. Fuck. She kept screaming at me to gun it, but I knew if I drove right now she would either be pulled out or have her back broken. I opened my door and circled around the car. We had no weapons on us, since our plan was to sneak in and call the police from the inside after finding Victoria and Jim. I was about to tackle the guy, but I just fucking stood there. This was no normal fucking guy. His hands were blood-soaked, his nails long and sharp. His movements were erratic and jerky. He pulled Reagan out of the window and tossed her at a nearby wall. She blacked out. What the fuck are you? I asked. At least I think I asked. I don't remember if I spoke at all, I was so terrified. I do not want her. She is filthy, he said. His voice was raspy, and low. He stretched out random syllables and would stumble midward as well. I want clean ones, only. I turned around and ran. Straight into his house. I heard his footsteps behind me. Erratic as hell. Thud. Thud thud. Thud. Thud thud thud. Thud. I turned my head to see how far away he was. I had a few seconds on him, which normally would have comforted me, but the way he ran. His legs were spread wide and he took gigantic fucking steps, almost like leaps, and flailed his arms. It would almost be goofy if it weren't for that inhuman speed. My lead was quickly disappearing. Then I remembered he locked his door. Well, shit. And here comes this fucking psychopath running at me at full speed. So I turned around and stood there like an idiot. Right before he tackled me I dove out of the way. He hit the door and fell to the ground. I started kicking him and he was screaming. I saw a metal rod nearby, grabbed it, and smashed him over the face. He stopped moving. I should have decapitated the piece of shit, but Victoria and Jim could have been dying that very moment. I decided to call the police. I found his keys and opened the door. I immediately took out my phone to dial the cops. No reception, typical fucking sprint. I frantically walked around the place looking for the basement door, checking my phone the whole time. I opened a few doors and found nothing. His house was eerily normal. Finally. Two bars. I dialed 911 and simultaneously opened a door. Holy fucking shit. I stepped inside before I realized where I was. The smell was putrid, and it was terrifyingly cold. It was a fucking walk-in refrigerator. No shelves, no storage, just an empty and cold room with vents. And a floor covered in meat. Human meat. In some corners it looked like steaks, chopped up with intent. The rest of the place was just blood, body parts, and entrails. It was too late for my shoes. I stepped into what was literally an inch-high pool of coagulated blood. If it weren't for the adrenaline, I would have vomited. I closed the door and got the fuck out of there. I needed to find that basement. 
I looked at my phone, call dropped. Fuck. I tried dialing again, but it wouldn't go through. Luckily, I found the basement. I ran down it and turned on the lights. The smell was putrid here as well, but it wasn't rotting meat. It was, shit. Literally the smell of piss and shit. On one end of the room I saw a bed with chains on it, bolted to the floor. Reagan's bed. I looked at the opposite end. It was Victoria. She was completely naked, covered in God knows what, rocking back and forth with her eyes wide open, staring at the wall. She was so skinny. She literally looked like a skeleton. Holy fuck, babe, Vic, it's me. I'm here and I'll get you out of here. She kept rocking back and forth, slowly, in perfect rhythm. She was staring at a clock on the wall. It was broken, with the second hand repeatedly going back and forth by one interval. Let's go! I screamed. Suddenly, she stopped moving, and turned slowly towards me, her eyes still wide. She wasn't blinking. She stared right at me, no, it looked like she was staring through me. Her jaw opened, far beyond the point where it should have. I heard bones cracking, and she bared her teeth. I didn't have time for this shit. I ran to get her. I tripped. And I blacked out. I wish I could say this story had a hero's ending, but it didn't. I was lucky. Very lucky. The police traced the call, I guess, and got to me. We all woke up in the hospital. They didn't find this Wendigo psychopath, but they're searching for him. They didn't find Jim either. A horrifying thought went through my mind, and I asked them about that meat fridge. They said it would take them months to run all that DNA and most of it would be unreliable due to the cross-contamination. Reagan and I were fine, but Victoria was in poor shape. We visited her at the hospital every day for months since then. The police department stationed an officer by her door during the night, for her safety. I thought that was great of them. The guy was real nice, too kept her company and genuinely seemed to care about her condition. I wondered if he would be able to protect her if that psychopath showed up again. He was tall as hell, and had a gun. I couldn't complain, I guess. I've tried talking about the case with the cop before, but every time he would tell me there was nothing he could tell me. For some reason, I trusted him. Heck, I still do. I had so many unanswered questions about everything, but every time I'd think about asking one, I felt as though I didn't need to. To be honest, I kind of stopped caring about all this anyway. I've moved on, you could say. So much so, I'm not even going to bother to proofread this post. Usually I'd comb through it several times to make sure I didn't make any glaring errors, but I'm just so tired. I need rest. Victoria is still in the hospital, and her condition doesn't seem to be improving that much, but there is always hope. Reagan and I will be waiting for her when she's better. Fourth story. There is a door in my backyard and that's not the only thing I've found. My name is Hugh and I recently moved into a nice little house in the woods. Sadly my grandfather passed away and I recently inherited his money. I was the only family he had and when I was born my father left without saying a word and it drove my mother into a deep depression causing her to take her own life. My grandfather kept me and raised me by himself. My grandfather told me my mother loved me but her mental health wasn't the best sadly after my father left us. He told me he wished he could have helped her more so that I would have had a life with her. I'd constantly dream about her, imagining me and her going out for walks and doing normal mother and son things. 
like going out to eat or watch movies together. A way to keep the memory of her my grandfather would show me recordings of him and her together, and even videos of her holding me singing me to sleep when I was a baby. She was beautiful, but even though I never got to meet her my grandfather filled in the gaps for what a parent should be to their kid. Gramps always took care of me and made sure I was happy. He would always buy me anything I wanted. He spoiled me and I loved him. So it broke my heart when he sadly passed away from lung cancer. My grandfather was against smoking but he got hooked at an early age. He would smoke at least four packs a day or even more. He never smoked around me though he was ashamed of himself. His addiction killed him but I don't blame him. I know he always did his best for me he just struggled with something he got hooked to when he was just a kid. He always told me to live life and go explore the world. He always told me that I should go out and see life and nature. He always would take me for walks out in the woods, but they would never be for too long due to his condition. I love nature honestly that's what led me to use my inheritance to buy a large amount of land a nice cabin to live in. The place was beautiful, nice and rustic. My own little humble abode honestly reminded me of some kind of magical forest home. I love Lord of the Rings and fantasy shit so my inner nerd geeked out. Also, somehow I managed to even get good internet so I could still play my computer games. Honestly, if it wasn't for my gramps I would probably be sitting in my room playing World of Warcraft every day avoiding the sun like a bat. One of the big reasons why I love the woods is the mysteries and stories behind them. My grandfather would tell me all kinds of stories about the woods. Honestly, I couldn't tell if they were true or false. He always told me to believe in what I want and that it's my decision if I want to believe because if I did I would be accepting a complete world of the unknown. A world where science can't explain with a microscope. Honestly, I never understood what he was even trying to say until recently, you see I was exploring my property since I own a large amount of land and I discovered some weird things. To make this easy let me make a list of things. The first strange thing I discovered was a door out in the woods off of one of the paths on my property. It's a strange thing, it's just a plain white door. I tried opening it and it was locked. The first thought that came into my head was why was this random door just in the middle of nowhere standing up. Let me explain this thing was not attached to a building or even a doorway, in fact, it's literally just a door. Your guess is as best as mine I still can't figure out what the hell that is about. Another thing I witnessed was something that is more common to me because it is something my grandfather used to talk about a lot. He always told me stories about man-eating creatures that stalked forests picking off lost hikers. He called these creatures Wendigo a man-eating creature that is caused by someone who is lost and hungry that commits cannibalism. I'm not exactly sure if that is the creature I saw I would love feedback. It had a skull of a deer as its face and walked around with the body of a wolf. Honestly I know it might seem like I am calm cool and collected about all of this but honestly, I am a little freaked out. The only thing that is keeping me from leaving this place currently is the fact that nothing has tried attacking me so far. Finally, the last creature slash human hybrid I saw or shall I say actually got to speak to is this creature I've decided to call a seedling. They are these little tree-type creatures that walk around and tend to the forest. They seem to be friendly and when discovering them in my garden, they gave me a wooden bowl full of blueberries. I was skeptical to eat them until the little creature picked one up and ate one in front of me. It seemed as if the little guy couldn't talk but he seemed to understand me. I asked him where did he come from. He pointed to the forest and when he did I noticed he wasn't just pointing at the forest he was pointing at a little tree that led a hole into the ground. 
My eyes began to completely focus on it and I saw another one of the little creatures. I asked the little guy if it was its family he gave me a little thumbs up. I also asked if it was friendly and not going to hurt me and it hugged my leg as a sign of friendship. After that it walked off and crawled into its little tree stump. That was a couple of hours ago and I'm not sure what to think currently. This place is strange, but I have never seen this kind of stuff and I don't think anyone actually has. I feel like I have a connection with the forest and I don't want to leave. Well I should be heading off to bed it's 11.53 PM and I am mentally exhausted from today. To whoever is reading this. Give me some info on what I saw and maybe what these little sapling little creatures are. They seem to be friendly, but you can never be too sure in this world. Well later until next time. Hugh. I'm sorry I have not updated everyone on my situation and for people just now reading this go refer to my previous post there's a door in my backyard part 1 my name is Hugh and I recently bought a house in the woods and there is something weird going on in the forest around me. Some of the things I've encountered are friendly so far, but most of them not so much. I currently have something big to talk about. The reason I have not posted as of recently is that I have been dealing with so much shit I am practically going mad. You see someone came to my home, he said he read the last post I put up. I have no idea how he managed to get my location from a reddit post this situation has kind of freaked me out about posting here but he said he wanted to investigate the woods with me. I told him no obviously and that it isn't safe for people and that life isn't some silly game and that he shouldn't be playing ghost hunter. To be completely honest I just don't like the company especially from the likes of people who creepily find my location online and think it is okay to come to visit me without even asking. Also, I don't want to disturb the seedlings because they have been working on some kind of project in my backyard. They have been really sweet as of recently and have even made me some pretty cool chairs and table in my backyard out of sticks and leaves. Honestly, they are quite comfy and I don't want to ruin my friendship with them. The dude seemed to have fucked off and left me alone after me telling him to leave and scaring him by telling him this. The seedlings don't take kindly to intruders of this property. Trust me they have even almost taken me down a couple of times thinking I was some stranger breaking into the house when I locked myself out. I'm going. To be honest, they aren't actually vicious and them attacking me thinking I was an intruder when I locked myself out was true but when they attacked me they charged at me with little sticks and were hitting my legs. Luckfully the little guys are weak and I was able to quickly tell them it's me and that everything was fine. This is probably actually why they are making me so many things as of lately. Probable to apologize for attacking my shins. Well, anyways a couple of nights after he left I was getting ready for bed. I just finished watching the new season of South Park and I was pretty tuckered out and was ready to hit the hay. I brushed my teeth and hopped into bed. I was asleep for maybe 4 hours at most maybe. Until I heard the sounds of screaming and the sound of something hitting the side of my house. I woke up and began to freak out because the screaming wasn't the kind of screaming an animal would make but the sound of a human. I was pretty tired still but I knew I had to check on whatever was screaming and what the hell hit my house. The sound sounded like it came from my backyard. I tiptoed into my kitchen which had a window allowing me to see into my backyard. What I saw was not something I have ever even heard of and I know for damn sure this thing is not a skinwalker, wendigo or anything else I have ever heard of. Standing there trotting in my backyard was a horse type creature it was as black as the night with eyes glowing a light blue. The creature had the body of a horse but it had six legs and where its head should be extruded another body sort of like how a centaur would look but instead of human arms and a face blade-like arms were on it appeared to be four coming out of it. Two on each side, and the face oh my god. 
the face was the worst part its eyes glowed a light blue but its face was stained with blood. It appeared to have the face of a mantis. I just dropped to the floor after seeing this and began to cry myself to sleep. I had never seen anything remotely close to something that terrifying in my entire life. Not even that weird wolf-deer hybrid creature scared me this bad. I awoke to water splashing my face I jumped back hitting my head off of one of my cabinets in my kitchen. When I opened my eyes I realized what splashed water on me was one of the seedlings. The one that gave me the bowl of berries. I looked at the creature and I gave it a hug and began to sob. I was so happy that it was alive and not hurt. I couldn't imagine the only living thing living not miles away were to die. The seedling hugged back and I felt a sap dripped from its little hollowed eye holes. I got up and asked him what happened and he pointed to my notebook on my table and gestured for me to give it to him. I listened to him wondering why he would need it. He picked up a pen I must have dropped on the floor and began to write. I was in shock the little guy began to write in English. It wasn't perfect English but it was legible kind of like how a second grader's handwriting and spelling would be sloppy. What he wrote down as me scared I'm going, to be honest. He wrote down the words the old one I asked him what he meant and he wrote down the word old god. I'm going, to be honest, I'm still freaking out about this but before I had to think about the whole situation. The little guy wrote down the words follow. I followed them outside to the side of my sliding glass door leaving my kitchen entering the backyard and next to the wall plastered on my wall was a massive bloodstain and what seemed to be a small bucket full of red liquid with a sponge floating in the water. I knew immediately what must have happened. What the creatures call the old one must have taken the life of the man I told to leave. He must have stayed to see the unknown but the unknown saw him first. I asked the little guy what happened to the body and he pointed to a cherry blossom tree in my backyard. This tree was not there yesterday apparently when they found the man's body that put his body in a hole and used his body as fertilizer allowing the tree to grow. After this whole scenario with the guy dying I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything there's more stuff I want to talk about but writing this is just stressing me out even more and I just currently want to go to bed. Well anyways everyone I'm going to go to bed I need advice on what should I do. Hugh. Wendigos, skinwalkers, seedlings, and gods. This world is a strange one, a place full of mystery. People study for all their lives to see the stuff I have seen. Should I say I'm lucky? Could you call this lock? People go around searching for the unknown, but let me tell you this it's just not worth it. Live your life happily remain in the dark for the things I've seen this past month has completely changed my mindset on the world and myself as a person. My name is Hugh and I recently bought a house in the woods and there's something strange going on in the woods around me. This property is changing me. Day by day night by night I feel as if my body is changing. I noticed I have been able to lift a lot heavier things, things I probably shouldn't be able to lift at my size. Honestly, I have no clue why, well anyways. It's been a month and I have been absent and have not been able to get my posts on here this was due to my internet being out and me studying. You might be wondering what I'm studying. They're creatures that inhabit these woods and the things I've spotted crawling around in the forest, and the animals, for example, are even weirder than half the monsters I have met. Yesterday I saw this skinny pale deer just straight up standing on two legs no clue why and I shot it. No this was not a skinwalker or a monster just a weird deer. Your guess is as good as mine as to why it was doing what it was doing, but you know what that isn't even remotely close to taking the top place for the weird shit I've discovered this month. I'll be honest since my last post my mindset has changed massively and I don't believe I'm mentally okay or how should I say it's stable. 
I've noticed my feelings have begun to fade, sensitivity is almost out the window. I find that I'm more selfish now and been focusing on myself and Charles the seedling and yes I named him Charles. I don't remember the last time I talked to someone that wasn't just someone passing through my property lost. I swear this place is changing me I can hear whispers at night trying to lure me outside of my home. I swear one of these nights they are going to take me and it's going to be the last of me. I don't want to leave this place behind and leave this place to corruption. I have one theory of what's going on like I said I've been doing lots of research of my own. My first discovery which would make a lot of sense of why I have been changing have to do with Charles. Charles has always made sure I eat the berries he picks for me every day. You might be thinking oh that's sweet of him to do but I believe this is for a reason. When the man died and was barred a cherry blossom tree grew where he was set. I believe the berries could be infused with some magical essence by the seedlings. Maybe they are like super vitamins but in fruit form. I'll agree it's awesome but this theory has some dark sides to it. I think the whole reason for him feeding me these are to protect me which is awesome and sweet but I believe he's making me stronger in hopes to destroy the corruption of the property. I don't know if I can just run from this madness. I feel as if it already consumed me. What if these creatures got out? Should I just run away and let them do as they wish? No? Yes? I don't know. I have so many questions so little time day by day more come more go more stay. I'm sorry let me recollect myself. I think I've been chosen by the forest to stop what's going on. I've done studies on that weird door. Me and Charles took a trip to the door, on the way I felt a strange feeling as if something was watching me the whole entire time. My suspicion turned out not to be paranoia because when I turned my back a white pale creature with no face was just standing there staring at me. I don't mean something stupid like Slender Man, this fucking thing was copying my movements and it was nude. No way I was letting that creepy little shit follow me any further than it already had. I raised my hands and it followed I clenched my hand and blew a hole into its chest. The thing scampered away into the woods, I was not going to take any chances and if anyone feels bad for the creatures I caught that fucker eating my internet antenna, should have gone for the head. When we arrived at the door I noticed there were large hoof prints on the ground around it and bones seemed to have been scattered around it. I reached for the door handle and it twisted and actually opened. What I saw on the inside was a darkness I didn't dare walk through and for fear of my life in Charles, I closed it immediately. I asked Charles where it lead and he pointed to a pile of bones laying on the ground. I picked him up and I ran back to the house and to people who don't understand I believe Charles meant that it's a land of the dead. My theory is that all these dark entities and creatures are all coming from the door whenever that old god comes through. Throughout this month I have discovered some pretty cool things, something I thought was evil actually turned out to be friendly and hasn't bothered me and that is the skinwalker. I actually met it when I was hiking to clear my mind and it just approached me and spoke to me and introduced itself and told me its name was Henry weirdly enough and told me he has no plans to attack or harm me. He asked if I could just leave him be which I have complied and me and him have not run into each other really since. At this point I don't know what to believe in, so many people say these creatures are evil but what the hell man. Are you kidding me a friendly skinwalker I don't even know anymore? Due to this place being so confusing I have decided to write myself a set of rules. Rule 1 if in contact with unknown creature if it is creepy shoot it. Rule 2 if creature approaches you and could have attacked you don't shoot it. Rule 3 Charles must be protected at all costs due to him being my only real friend. Rule 4 don't go through the door. Rule 5 don't go outside at night. So far these rules have kept me safe and I'm sticking to them. 
Something is knocking on my door I have so much to say, and I fear little time. I'll try to keep everyone updated on what's going on I have to go. Hugh. Insanity extreme foolishness or irrationality or the state of being mentally ill. Confusion and paranoia 24-7 am I going mad? I swear I heard someone knocking at the door but when I walked outside it was just darkness. I could have sworn I saw something but when I took out my phone and shined the light I saw nothing. Rule 5 don't go outside. Rule 5 don't go outside. Rule 5 don't go outside. This thought kept racing through my head. How could I forget? There are five rules, five fucking rules, and I screwed it up. I could hear the sound of whispers starting to swarm around me. Their voices ever so growing louder, I have no clue what these creatures are or even if they are some form of monster. Maybe it's just in my head from all this madness I've experienced I thought. I came to the realization that this wasn't completely in my head when I saw the shining of yellow eyes surrounding me among the tree line of my property. I swear there could have been hundreds of eyes staring me down then and there. I was frozen the voices began to get louder what was I to do? I saw as the eyes proceeded to get closer to me until I saw a flash of blue came running towards me. It bit my leg and dragged me into the inside of my home closing the door with its back leg and biting the lock turning it to lock the door. I snapped out of my fear and whipped out the revolver I keep on me at all times and I heard a voice say this I get I'm a monster but should you really be pointing a gun at someone who just saved your life? Then and there, I realized it was Henry the Skinwalker. I asked him what was he doing outside of my house and why there are so many eyes outside and what was he going to do with me. I heard him exhale. Listen, son, I've been in these woods for a long time and I'm not too sure what those creatures are either. I like to refer to them as the gossipers, from what I can tell they seep themselves into your mind just from their stare and cause you to overly stress. You can snap out of it though if you realize what's going on quickly enough. I was trying to get away from them when I found you and decided to give you a hand. I thanked him but noticed something strange about Henry. He somehow managed to change his look he wasn't like how he was before. This time he took the appearance of a dog slash mountain lion hybrid. I asked him if it hurt to change and he just remained silent. I told him he could sleep wherever he wanted and that I was going to go to bed. He laid on my couch and passed out and I went to bed. I'd be lying if I was to say I wasn't scared of a skinwalker sleeping in the other room. To be honest, I was terrified but he seemed to relax and he did save my life so my mind was shortly put to ease. Knocking and the sounds of voices whispering outside my window continued all through the night. I could hear the voices playing tricks on me. Attempting to lure me out with the voice of my grandfather. When morning came around I heard Henry leave my house, and when I walked outside of my bedroom I found a note on the ground explaining to me that, Henry couldn't take living in this forest anymore and that these things were driving him crazy bringing back the urges to attack people. In fear of attacking me or the creatures of the forest, he ran off. I still have no seen him and have been thinking about him. A lot of his story is completely unknown to me but this world is strange and sometimes we don't get all the answers when we want them. I talked to Charles and me and home both decided it would be a good idea to put up some walls around my house to keep some creatures out. Since Charles is able to manipulate nature I asked him if he could just do it for me. He shook his head and told me and explained to the best of his ability that his powers aren't strong enough to do that. This caused me me to be slightly irritated. I wasn't upset with Charles or his friends I was upset with the fact that I will have to leave the house to go down to the local town. I realize I just have to suck it up though for my own well-being and Charles. It took me some time to start up my truck because I haven't used it in so long. No there wasn't anything wrong with the engine or anything it was just that. 
I left some old food in it and it has made my car smell like the county dump. Not my proudest moments. While waiting for my car to air out I decided to clean it off and spray it down since it's been collecting dust. While cleaning the truck I noticed strange claw marks all over it. Anxiety began to consume me and I started having a slight panic attack because I began to fear whatever was outside must have gotten in my home and started tearing up my truck. But all that anxiety and stress faded when Charles waddled towards me holding a rat. My fears turned into happiness. I know this is going to sound strange, but in my garage, I had an old cage I used to have my own pet rat that lived in. I took the rat out of Charles's little hands and let it run all over me. The little guy was very quick and friendly. I cleared out the cage of my previous rat and put him in it and left some food and water for him. A new member of the family, I told Charles. He bounced up and down in excitement. After all of that, I hopped into the truck and started it up. Charles began to try to climb up into my lap to ride with me but I told him he had to stay home because he is too big and could be spotted by people. He then began to shrink until he was pocket sized. This was amazing I didn't even know he could shrink or enlarge himself. I told him I guess he could come and he hopped into my hoodie pocket and fell asleep. The drive was long but soothing. Honestly, I nearly dozed off while driving it was the first time I felt really at peace in these woods in a long time. I've been experiencing nightmares almost every night. Sometimes I don't even dream at all anymore. The gossipers just talk and talk and talk. They try to lure me out, it's like torture. It makes me feel like there's a hole in my chest because they just use the voices of my grandfather I can hear him screaming my name for help and it just hurts so bad. The ride soothed my mind and I felt all my anxiety melt away for a while it was just me, Charles, and the road into town. I saw the place I needed to go and purchased as much wood as I could fit in the back of my truck. I decided to walk through the town and check out the local stores. I purchased some things, but when waiting at the register for the woman to put all my stuff in bags. I looked at a board that was put up and covering it was the names and faces of missing people. This caused me to have a flashback to when I found the door and there were bones scattered all around it. I didn't realize the corruption had spread all the way to the town. I should have realized all those bones couldn't be coming from just lost hikers. I mean I thought at least some of it could have been from animals, but this. This just proves it. Those monsters are coming into this town taking things. I was wondering why there are so few people around town. I felt Charles begin to wake up and he tugged at me through my pocket. I could tell there was something wrong and that he wanted to leave. I went back into my truck and me and Charles began to drive away. But. Someone began to tail us, they were speeding upon us and I flowered it I began to speed all through the windy roads leading back to my house. When I turned around whoever was chasing me was gone. It was close to 9 pm and the dark had already set around me and Charles. I made it into the house and here I am writing this now. Today has been exhausting and I can hear the whispers of the gossipers beginning to start. I'm just going to put on some Netflix and try to fall asleep. Hugh. Fifth Story. The Wendigo. When I was about 11 years old, me and my friends were playing in the forest by my house, like we did every weekend. Things were going how they always did. We were running from field to field and gleefully chasing a flock of Canada geese trying to find a place to bed down for the night. After it started getting dark, we decided that it was time to go home for the night, a little later than usual. We followed the path from the field furthest from our house and passed through a section of forest in between. We had more fun than usual, and the days were getting shorter, so we were out later than we should be. 
After all, we were only 11 to 13 years old and our parents were giving us all this freedom. It made us feel special and we didn't want to ruin it by getting yelled at for staying out too late. So anyway, the day had gotten to the point where the sun was gone and we could barely make out the silhouette of the trail in front of us, and we had to use our arms to feel for branches so we didn't clothesline ourselves. After barely making it through the forest, we had to cross the larger field that separated us from our houses, three lonely homes tossed randomly like dice into the Canadian boreal forest, only connected a distant small town by a thin dirt road. That was when we saw a shadow moving on the opposite side. It didn't look like a person, it was too big. It looked more like an animal or something. We didn't know, and we didn't really care to be honest. One of my friends convinced himself the figure was his dad, and yelled Dad, we are coming back you didn't have to come get us. There was no answer. The shadow swayed for a few seconds and then moved closer to us. It moved in a way that didn't seem like it was walking, it looked like it was gliding. It stayed close to the pine trees, and moved closer and closer. It moved forward fifty feet, stopped, and then moved towards us again. We stood still, in shock. By the time it was one hundred feet away, it was so dark that we could barely make out its shape, even though it was closer than ever. One of my friends said, let's go, in an awkward raspy whisper, a failed attempt to be silent. Whatever it was had seen us and knew where we were but our vision was basically useless. We all bolted blindly into the night and got separated. After I crossed the field I screamed where are you guys, and received two answers. Me and my two-thirds friends regrouped, and went home. We explained what had happened to my parents, who called the police. The End Thanks a lot for watching the video till the end, subscribe to our channel Horror in Detail. Drop your opinions slash suggestions in the comment section, and like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm.